Parshas Hazinu, uh, the Torah is, is uh, praising Hashem. And it's a very interesting Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Ki kol drachav mishpat, all of Hashem's ways are justice. Kel emuna ve'ein avil. Which is translated over here, a God of faith without iniquity. Tzadik v'yasharhu, everything is straight, everything is righteous. Meaning, in Hashem's judgment, there's no, no flaws, there's no deceiving, there's no, uh, you know, hidden agendas, no iniquity. So the, the question that's asked, Chaim Shmulevitz brings it down in, in Sichos Musar and Parshazinu. He says, I don't get it. He says, that's a praise of Hashem? <laughs> I mean, uh, courts in this world also are not supposed to have any injustice. You're not you're supposed to have iniquity. It's supposed to be straight. So the fact that God keeps that, that's uh, something unique, that's something special, that's something we're going to praise uh, about Hashem. So what's going on over here? So before I give the answer that he quotes from uh, Yusuf Blazer, one of the students of Yisrael Salater, back up a little bit. Okay? We, we uh, mentioned last week that now is a time for tefillah. Actually, what was the time for tefillah? Now more than ever. So let's go back a little bit to the basics of tefillah and how it works. How, why does it work? If Hashem decided that Rasman is supposed to have X or Y, you're not supposed to have Z. So how is it that if I daven for it, now all of a sudden I'm going to get it or not get it? How does that work? So the Sefer HaIkrim, Sefer HaIkrim is written by Yosef Albo. He lived between the, eight, the years 1380 and 1444. This is a, an old Sefer. So over there, in Maimur Dalid, he writes, if you want to look it up, Perak Ches, chapter 18, he says, how is it that tefillah works? So he says that through my tefillah, I transform into someone else. Meaning, the more I daven, the more I recognize how dependent I am on Hashem, how much I appreciate Hashem. So I come out transformed. I'm a different person, right? You have the spiritual uplifting experience through Shmon Esrei. Sometimes people need a good kumzitz to, to get them high. Every Shmon Esrei that we ever have talking to Hashem, if you do it right, you pay attention to what we're saying, you walk out, you're a different person. Literally different than the person that you walked in. So the person that walked into the Shmon Esrei, maybe he didn't deserve the money. Maybe he didn't deserve the good health. Maybe he didn't deserve that uh, extra piece of knowledge that he wanted to have. But after the Shmon Esrei, he's a different person. That new person is not, didn't have a decree on him. Didn't say he shouldn't understand that. Didn't say he shouldn't get the money. Didn't say he shouldn't be able to establish that relationship. And therefore, he's able to merit to get that which he's asking. So tefillah makes you a different person with a whole different set of presence, judgments, whatever it is that we're trying to go ahead and get from Hashem. And that's what he explains then the question is, this was asked not that long later by the Sefer HaKosei. The Sefer HaKosei is on the side of Ein Yaakov. Whoever has ever seen that Sefer, we had someone last year, we see him in all of Ein Yaakov. Okay? Ein Yaakov is a, a parish on the Agadatha of all of Shas. And on the side of the Ein Yaakov, there's a Sefer, a parish called the HaKosei, written by Rav Yaakov Ben Chaviv. He lived 1450 to 1516. Okay, so a little after Yosef Abba. He asks the following question. He says, that answer explains how it is if Rasman is asking for a car and he didn't deserve it before the Shmon Esri, how is the Shmon going to help? Because now after the Shmon Esri, he's a different person. He's super Rasman, and super Rasman can go ahead and get the car. Okay. But how does it work if, let's say, I have a friend who doesn't feel well. I have a friend who needs a car. I have a friend who has something else. And I want to dive in for him. And we all think about other people in our tefillah. We're diving for other people. That guy has no clue that I even doubted for him, right? So how does it work if through my feel I transform, it's very, very nice, but that other person didn't transform nothing. He's still sitting there without his car. He's still sitting there not feeling well, whatever it is. He's exact same religious, um, spiritual level that he was before my Shmon Esrei. I don't lift him up with my Shmon Esrei. So he's the exact same thing. So how does my feel work for another person? And we have sources all over the place that say that you can dive for another person that can help. That is at work. 
That's his, uh, that's his question. So an answer that I found is given by a sefer called the Meir La'olam. It was, written, it was written sometime in the 1800s, named uh, Meir Michal Rabinovich, who lived between the years 1819 and 1901. And the exact same answer, there's a little more uh, of a popular sefer called the Sheil Shushuvah's Maram Shit. Maram Shit also lived in the 1800s, 1807 to 1879. So if you want to decide up, it's an Orachim, so we raise the side again, 293. So he says the same exact answer. And, and, and he says as follows. Let's give a uh, muscle for a moment. Let's say you have a, uh, a court. A court, someone uh, gets arrested and uh, he's stolen. Okay. So that he's, he's brought in front of the judge and uh, the judge hears out the witnesses and hears out the defense, prosecution, etc. And he says, you're guilty. You have to go into jail. Okay. So he's handcuffed and they're walking him to jail. And all of a sudden, this lady starts running after the, the judge. Wait, 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 wait. That's my husband. Yeah, I'm really sorry. Your husband is now going to jail. He'll be there for seven, eight years. No, no, you can't do that. He's my husband. He's the person that, that supports us. We need him. He's the rock in our emotional support and the financial support. You can't put him in jail. <laughs> Man, your husband stole. It, that's the law. You steal, you go to jail. Say, that, he stole, but I didn't steal, says the wife. Why should I be punished and now I have to suffer for the next seven years and not have anyone to support me because my husband stole? It's a good question, right? So the judge, uh, uh, you know, he looks at the Constitution. It doesn't say that you have to handle the wife and kids. He stole, he goes to jail, finished, nothing to talk about, right? You never would have heard of a pardon based on the, the wife screaming that she's upset that her husband murdered someone. You, you stole, you, you killed, that's it. You go to jail, finished, right? Explain these uh, achronim, that is not the case when it comes to Hashem. When it comes to Hashem, Hashem takes into account every single person and permutation and ramification of everything that is going to come out of the judgment. That's what, in the Seed of Musr, he points out, that's what this, this Pasuk means. What does it mean that the justice of Hashem is ain avel? It's without iniquity. It means that anything that Hashem judges, anything that Hashem decrees, any ripple effect, every minute idea, anything that might come out of it is taken into account. And therefore, if this guy is a real bad person and, you know, he deserves X, Y, and Z, but his wife doesn't deserve to be affected by that or his friend doesn't deserve to be affected, or etc., don't deserve to be affected by that, so that guy won't get it. He's going to have to get something else that is not going to affect all of those other people. And that's what it means. Down to the, to the slightest thing, even, even though the regular courts, that's not the game, that's not the way it works, right? They could have a perfect justice, Judgment and it can have a very negative effect on a lot of people. That's not taken into account. Doesn't make a difference when it comes to Hashem. Zero. It's perfect. Hashem takes into account every single ramification that comes out from everything that that, that comes about. So it comes along the Sefer Meir Olam and the Marim Shit, and they say as follows: How is it? We ask. They ask. When I daven for someone else that's sick, how does it help him? Become healed. He didn't transform. He didn't change. He didn't become super Rossman. How does it help? It says as follows. Because as I dive for him, I feel the pain that he's going through. It's bothering me. It's, I'm, I'm in pain. I'm, I'm hurt now. The fact that he's not feeling well. I'm hurt. The fact that he doesn't have that car. I'm hurt. The fact that he's having issues with his job or his relationships or whatever it is. And that pain that now I'm experiencing, do I deserve that? Did Rasman do anything to deserve that pain? No. So now Hashem says, oh, hold on a second, I gotta check, something has to change over here. Joe over there, he needed something to punish him, whatever it is, because of X, what he did. But now I see that it's having a ripple effect and ramifications on Rasman. Now Rasman is having pain that he doesn't deserve. Oh boy, I have to heal now Joe so that Rasman isn't under pain. And that's how it works. That's what they explain. 
Meaning, through my tefillah, through my experiencing the other person's pain, I now have a pain that I don't deserve, and now, as Shem has to say, I have to uplift whatever judgment, whatever I'm giving them, whatever misfortune that person's having right now, because it's affecting Rasmi. Which comes out a very, 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 very big chinch that, um, since I learned this, I've actually tried to integrate into my tefillah. It is not easy, okay? And, and that is, that it's not enough. When I read the bracha of Rifa'inu, my Shimon Esrei, and I start to list all my names of my people that I know that are sick, it's not enough to just go through the list. You know, by memory, I don't remember who they are anymore sometimes. At least I used to not know. I just tried to change it. But I never know who they are anymore. I've been saying it for the years. For all that person not even alive anymore. I, maybe he's all better. I, I literally don't know. I, I don't even can't remember who the, what their English name is. Okay? And there's reading my names. I say my heart reading. I'm not even paying attention. According to this, that doesn't even work. Because the whole way that my feeling for that other person is going to work is because I'm experiencing on some level the pain that that person is in. I'm thinking about the person a little bit. I'm saying, oh, well, if he doesn't feel well, so what does that mean for him? What does that mean for his family? What does it mean for his parents? What does it mean for his kids? What does that mean for his wife? What does, it, what does that mean if a person doesn't have a job? What, what, what might be going through? At least one point during the course of the day to go ahead and, and ha have, that, have that feeling. The, the, the Sefer on, on Hilchos Tefillah called Halicho Shlomo. It's a uh, psakim, different laws that Shlomo Zalman Orbach, Zechat Tadik of used to say. So over there, I want to look it up, it's in Perikhes, note 60. Okay, so Shlomo Zalman used to advise people not to daven for sick people unless they had at least a small connection with the ill person and felt his pain a little bit. Now again, you might not know the person, but you can ask about him, you can find out. He said you should feel something. A little bit. And, and he, he would tell the story about the Mariel Diskin. Mariel Diskin lived in the 1800s. And uh, he was once asked to daven for a sick person. And uh, the sick person was subsequently healed. So after some time, the Mariel Diskin bucked into that person that originally made his, that request to him and tell, asked him to daven for this sick person. He said, so no, what's going on with that, with that sick person? How's he doing? He said, oh, oh that guy? <laughs> He's a little better. And Mariel Diskin was, was, was upset. He's like, what? How could he not have told me? How could he not have told me that he got better? So what do you think it was easy for me every single day to actually think about that person and feel his pain? He should have told me right away. And they, and they stay over there, same story with the Shlomo Zalman Orbach, like he, a similar type of thing that happened with him, that he, he said, uh, I have uh, the language in English here, he said, how could you not have told me right away that, that your issues were resolved? Every day, three times a day, I'm pained and I feel your pain. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a tremendous, it's a tremendous lesson that through our tefillah, again, we're not just rattling off names. We're, we're, we're thinking about the person. We're feeling about the other person's pain. And we don't deserve that to, feel it, to have that pain. That itself is what allows the other person to be healed or allows that other person to get what he gets. And that's what uh, the Sikhos Musa writes, is, is the Pshat in this pasuk, like we explained. I once heard, there's a... Um, a big mashkiach named Jonas uh, Mishra Gadum, or Yom the Wolf, helped me discover this person. I suppose he's famous, but uh, I don't know if he was famous. And uh, has phenomenal sfarim, nine sfarim, or if Hashem, I was able to get them all. And uh, the wolf brought him to my house, he gave it to me. So uh, it's unbelievable. So, so he, he said as follows He said, in the name of Revuve Bengis, also lived in the late 1800s, early 1900s, big, big gadol. So he said, that's the, that's, this idea is the pshat in the Gemara. The Gemara says in the Sefer Shabbos, in Daf Kuvav, that if a member of your chabura, echad b'nei chabura, one of your friends, passes away, God forbid, so the whole chabura, the whole group of friends should be worried. They should be worried, what? And saying, he said, what does it mean? Why, why should they be worried? Why should they be worried? And so Rebekah explained because if you didn't deserve the pain of a friend or a relative or something that, 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 that passed away, if you didn't deserve that, and that would have happened. So the fact that we feel something, something that happens to anyone that we know, anyone in our surroundings that causes us to, to get worried or causes us to, to feel sad, or there's a reason that we have that feeling. Okay, yes, we, we care about other people, that, that's for sure, but the fact that it happened to us, that feeling should trigger within us the, the 
Ratzon, the desire to go ahead and, and, and do tshuva and to try to change it because there's a reason it happened to us. The reason things happen, it's not like, oh wow, it happened to my friend. Thank God it didn't happen to me. <laughs> I got scot free. Uh uh uh. If it happened to your friend and you feel it and you're in pain, you're sad about it, there's a reason that that thing happened to us. We have to realize everything that ever happens, all experiences that we have, good and bad, are all from Hashem. If someone else gets married, we're all excited about that. That's, there's a reason we're excited. That, that, that we deserve to be excited about something. It's a present from Hashem that we have that positive feeling. And God forbid, if you ever have a negative feeling, that's also related to what Hashem is doing. And that's what this Pasuk means. That the Mishpat is ain't other. Everything is just. Every little permutation, every little thing that we can't even think of. Hashem is taking into account. So one practical ramification, we always look for practical ramifications, right? One practical ramification of this is that when we dive in, we think about other people, we, we should take the moment to actually think about them. Think about what they're going through, think about their pain, try to connect to them. Don't just rattle off names and say, okay, great, I'm such a good guy because I rattle off a lot of names. We should really try, you might not say in every Shimon Esra, we should take a little bit of time, every single day, to think about the people that we're davening about for and, and what they're going through. Try to, try to appreciate and care about them. The other area, okay, this might sound a little bit selfish, is that the Mishnah says, a person should always look to acquire friends. It's good to have friends. It's good to have a lot of people that care about you. It's good to have a lot of other people that are affected by you. Like we've heard, Rabbi Tzrichimo, one of the greatest ways to, to be successful during the days of judgment is when a lot of people need you. A lot of people need you, then it's not, you know, you on a, in a vacuum might deserve X, Y, or Z, but because so many other people need you, it's going to affect so many other people, you won't get it. So it's almost like a card out. You want to, you want to get out? You want to, want to figure out a, an escape route? So it's good. It's a very good thing for a people to need us, for people to, to, to benefit from us, to people that care about us. People that, that seclude themselves, the introverts, and that seclude themselves in some corner, no one cares about them, they don't have friends, no one is interested in them. That's not, a, that's not what Judaism is about. We're, we're supposed to be ma'ur, we're supposed to be integrated and mixed with people and, and involved with people and have friendships. You have to spend time to build your friendships. No one should, God forbid, ever think that, oh, if I'm spending my time building a friendship that's bitl Torah and it means that I'm, I'm wasting my time. And, no, no, no. Friendships are, are part, is, is something that, that's healthy and good, and we're supposed to care about other people. People supposed to care about us, and we're supposed to develop our relationships and build our relationships and invest in our relationships. That, that's, that's part of it. That's a very, very big piece. It happens to be, according to what we just said now, it also helps you out at the end of the day. Okay, that's a side point. But, but, but we have to try, the Icar is the first thing, and that is that we're, we're really focusing on things that other people are going through. Try to get into their minds, try to get into their lives, try to get into their emotions what they're feeling, and try to help them, try to die for them. It should, it should pain us. Their needs should push us to, to try to help them in a, in a greater way. And, and as a Hashem, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll all experience through that, that all our tefillos are answered, not just for ourselves, but for all of Kla Yisrael. And as a Hashem, anyone that has any needs will see the Yeshua's, will see anything that they needed answered. Um, the Karmash.